As we journey through life, the dream of retirement often gleams on the horizon like a beacon of hope, promising leisure, adventure, and well-deserved rest after years of hard work. However, as we inch closer to that golden moment, the intricate web of tax implications woven into our financial landscape can turn this dream into an unexpected and perplexing nightmare. In this exploration, we will navigate the complex intersection of retirement aspirations and the ever-present specter of taxes. But before we proceed, hit that subscribe button and enable the notification bell, ensuring you never miss valuable knowledge. Here's a map of the United States that displays the highest state income tax rates in each respective state. From a broad perspective, it's clear that there's a considerable variation in how tax-friendly different states are. For example, when we examine states like Minnesota, New York, Oregon, and California, it becomes evident that each of these states imposes a top marginal income tax rate that either falls within the double-digit range or is very close to it. These rates can be considered relatively high in terms of state income taxes. On the flip side, there are states that don't levy any income tax whatsoever, such as Texas, Tennessee, Florida, South Dakota, Wyoming, Nevada, and Alaska. So if our primary consideration is income tax rates, choosing a state like Tennessee might appear to be a highly favorable decision due to its tax friendliness. This stands in contrast to states like Iowa, where the top marginal rate is 8.5%, making it comparatively less tax friendly. Operating a state comes with its own set of expenses. Each state generates varying tax revenues depending on its predominant industries. It's crucial to recognize that if a state maintains a notably low income tax rate, it probably has to compensate for the shortfall in tax revenues through alternative means. Hence, due to these complex fiscal dynamics, it's insufficient to solely concentrate on the state income tax rate. Instead, we must take into account a wide array of factors when assessing the overall tax friendliness of a particular state. For example, when examining the top marginal rate, our concern isn't solely the highest income tax rate itself, but rather the rate applied to the income tax you're actually earning. The distinction between taxing earned wages and retirement income is crucial in certain states. Some states have high income tax rates on earned wages, but don't tax retirement or pension distributions. Retirement income includes withdrawals from accounts like 401ks and IRAs, while pensions are a separate category of retirement income. States like Illinois, Pennsylvania, Mississippi, and Iowa have tax policies post-2022 that differentiate between working and retirement income. If you live in one of these states, your retirement income won't be taxed, making them favorable for retirees. In Iowa post-2022, withdrawing funds from tax-deferred retirement accounts is similar to Tennessee's tax treatment. However, Alabama and Hawaii tax working income but exempt pension income, offering a tax advantage to retirees in these states. So, retirees in Alabama and Hawaii won't be taxed on their pension income, making them attractive retirement options. The second consideration to keep in mind is property tax and real estate costs. When we're striving to minimize our tax burden and select the most suitable state for our financial situation, the source of taxation becomes less relevant. What truly matters is reducing our overall tax liability. In this context, it wouldn't necessarily matter whether we are paying taxes through one avenue or another. The primary goal is to minimize the total tax we pay. Consider the scenario where we decide to relocate to a state with no income tax to achieve some savings on our state income taxes. However, if this move results in a substantially higher property tax bill, it could potentially negate the modest savings we initially anticipated on the state income tax front. In such cases, it's crucial to weigh all the associated costs and benefits comprehensively to make an informed decision. In reality, it often makes more sense to focus on minimizing our tax liability by considering various avenues. It's worth noting that some states with low income tax rates
states may compensate for this by imposing higher property tax rates. So the key is to take a holistic approach to taxation, considering all relevant factors, rather than fixating solely on one aspect like income tax. We aim for a modest property tax rate, one that doesn't burden us excessively with the house's cost. Consider a state with no income tax, such as Texas, which ranks 45th in terms of the impact of property taxes. Interestingly, when we examine South Carolina, we find ourselves contributing a bit towards the state income tax rate. However, this expense is offset by the savings we make on the property tax rate. So, the total state taxes paid through these two avenues would amount to approximately $2,300. In contrast, when we contrast this with Texas, there would be no tax obligation on that $80,000 income, but we would encounter a more elevated property tax rate. Let's explore the third factor to consider, which is how your state treats social security benefits for taxation purposes. To illustrate this, we'll make a comparison between two states often associated with high taxes, Minnesota and California. Interestingly, while California is commonly regarded as the state with the highest tax burden, our example will reveal that this isn't always the straightforward reality. When considering state income taxes, residing in Minnesota would result in owing approximately $4,600 in state income tax. This higher tax liability in Minnesota is because the state taxes social security benefits. On the other hand, if you were to live in California, where social security benefits are not subject to taxation, your state income tax liability would be significantly lower, totaling just $383. So even though California may appear to have the highest income tax rates on the surface, in this specific scenario, it doesn't necessarily hold. This example highlights the significance of examining all sources of your retirement income and understanding the tax impact implications associated with each. The fourth point to take into account is state inheritance taxes. Currently, the majority of retirees do not typically need to be concerned about surpassing the federal estate tax threshold. However, state inheritance taxes present a distinct situation. Now, there are two categories of taxes to consider when transferring wealth to the next generation. The estate tax is levied on your estate before passing it on to the next generation, and it is determined by the state in which you resided or passed. Away. The inheritance tax, on the other hand, is imposed on the beneficiary and is determined by the state in which they reside. Below, you'll find a map displaying states that implement either an estate tax, an inheritance tax, or both. Some states, such as Washington and Illinois, offer favorable retirement tax rate but still impose an estate tax upon your passing. Moving on to the fifth aspect to ponder, we must delve into state and local sales tax. It's worth noting that governments employ various methods to collect revenue through taxation. They may impose taxes on the income you earn, tax your investments, or assess taxes on the properties you possess. They also have the authority to impose taxes on your expenditures. It's essential to keep in mind that our primary objective is to reduce your overall tax burden during your retirement years. So, if you anticipate a significant expenditure in retirement or plan to maintain a sizable discretionary budget, it's crucial to consider the impact of local and state sales taxes on your finances. Consider a scenario in which an individual receives an annual retirement income of $100,000 and 50% of that income is allocated toward expenses that are subject to sales tax. If this individual resides in Oregon, they will not owe any sales tax, as Oregon does not impose a sales tax. However, if they were to live in Tennessee, where the average sales tax rate applies, they would be liable for approximately $4,775 in sales tax for the year. In this example, an individual's tax rate depends on their income source, such as Social Security, IRA distributions, or Roth distributions, and their state of residence, as each state has its own tax rules. The tax rate is also influenced by how much income is spent on non essential items versus basic needs. To find the most tax-friendly state, one must consider both income sources and spending habits, as well as the balance between discretionary and essential expenses. 
To conclude this video, it's important to emphasize that while tax considerations are significant, they are not the only factors to think about when choosing your ideal location. There are many other important variables specific to your situation that should also be taken into account. Secondly, when making your decision, it's crucial to delve into the second layer details. Versatility provides the opportunity for optimal adjustments. If you are entirely focused on perfecting your ideal location, one one strategy to consider would involve spending time in various places. For example, during a period of substantial Roth conversion, it might be advantageous to reside in a state that either doesn't tax retirement distributions or has no state income tax. At this juncture, you may consider transitioning to a region with potentially reduced property taxes and a lower sales tax rate. This strategic move can yield savings in terms of your financial outflows, especially concerning Roth conversions. Consequently, you'll benefit from decreased expenses in the long term. Ultimately, it's crucial to acknowledge that everyone's circumstances and objectives are unique. Hence, each person's focus will vary slightly, and this diversity underscores the fundamental purpose of crafting a financial plan. Such a plan should be meticulously tailored to suit your specific financial circumstances and objectives. And with the right approach, that dream of retirement can remain a beacon of hope guiding you towards a future of financial security and fulfillment. Thank you for joining us on this journey, and remember to stay informed and make the choices that best align with your unique path to retirement. Until next time!